okay, now that we've seen the model running, we're going to be looking at how it was built. So we will walk you through each of the steps and uh, understand each module and, and how it uses the data. So like you see, there's a pretty small number of modules. So all the parts will keep cycling through this uh, section here. And, um, and we don't need anything specific. It will all be based on the index number and the row number in the, in the sequence of, of operations for each of the parts. And, and the set of stations here is what makes it so simple and, and powerful. So, um, so like we saw, there are basically three main tables of, of, of data, so rework, work center number, and in the expressions here, um, operation times. There's also a small expression for distribution of, of parts. Uh, that's the percentage of chance of having a part of each type. So first, the part creation logic here. So the parts all get created by this create module. So it's fairly simple. It's just every one hour on average based on an exponential distribution. So an infinite number of parts may come in depending on the duration of the simulation. So parts will just keep coming in. And then we'll get assigned a certain number of attributes. So the operation ID, which is our main attribute, which will drive us through the different steps of the, of the manufacturing process. So it will be initialized to one so that we read the first um, work center ID here and the, the right operation times and, and so on. So we start in, at row one here, and, um, and then we use the, the distribution uh, the probabilities of the different part types to assign a part type, so either the blue parts or the red parts. So right now we're at 50-50. So these are are imported into a, an, ex, a, an expression from Excel, and it's a discrete prob probability distribution. And we will get the value of one or two here, one for blue parts, and two if it's a red part. And then we have the entity type and entity pictures, which are sets. So based on the A part type attribute, we will just choose the right entity type and, um, and the right entity picture. And we have sets for both of those. So uh, blue balls and red balls for the two types of, of parts. And the other ones are not used yet. Finally, we store the start time. So the current simulation time, T now, will be stored in the attribute start time here. And then the first work center is red. So we go into this table right here, and we are either a blue part or a, or, or a red part. And we've initialized our work center ID to one. So we go and read the two or the two here. So it's actually always two for now with the current data. So we're going to be storing the two value in this attribute here based on the table uh, work center ID using the current work center operation um, and the part type. So we start at station start, obviously, and then we route to the first work center of this set here. And this is a set of 10 stations and they're all in uh, order. And we're basically just gonna go to that set at the work center ID number that we've just read and we calculate the time of three minutes uh, multiplied by the number of the stations. Now, once the entity reaches one of the stations, it will go and um, be processed with that uh, station or that work center or machine. And uh, so it reaches this, um, this station, the station set here, and it goes to seize the resource. So there's a set of, re of 10 resources, ob obviously, here. So these 10 resources are defined here, and I'll have a capacity of one. And they are in the set called set R work center here. And based on the work center ID, <clears throat> which we're, we're currently at, we will seize the correct resource. And if we cannot seize it, we will end up in one of the 10 queues, which are defined as a set also. So these 10 queues here are in an advanced set queue. So as soon as we end up seizing the work center, we will delay for the specified amount of time in the operation times table here. 
depending on the part type. So we will read that and depending on the operation I row uh, or the, the, the row represents the step number if you, if you can if you can call it like that. So step number, part type. So step number is the row here and part type one or two and you read that value and delete. And next is a decide module. So we have a percentage of chance of reworking the part. So based on the rework sheet here, so we will rework once in a while based on that percentage. So randomly we will decide to rework or not. And if we don't, we just release the work center. So we release the correct resource from the set. And then we will assign the next step. So we will be reading the, well, incrementing the row number. So the step number here will go from one to two, for example. And once we've incremented that number, we can store the previous work center ID and read the next one. So we just read the next operation ID with the operation ID and the part type. We go and read the next work center ID in this table here. And if we go from two to six, for example, we will um, route um, three minutes, um, sorry, three minutes times the difference between the two and the six. So we just did an absolute uh, mathematical value of that times three minutes. And if the process is done, well, basically the work center ID, which has been read, will be a zero. And then we will go through here and we will go to the exit instead. So when a part is done with all of its operations, it's completed and it reaches the exit station. And before disposing it, we will just record a total part count for the current type. So either for blue parts or for red parts. And we will record also for the current part, the total time it has spent in the system. So it'll be the current simulation time minus the start time, which has been recorded at first. And we will store that in a set of tallies of total time and system. So these um, statistics have been created here in the tally and counter sheets. And we have created sets here with the tallies and the counters. So that's it. That's all it takes to create a nice data driven model. So this uh, kind of model can actually be used in real life situations and it's totally scalable, expandable. It's very easy to add some part types. It's actually, all, everything is already set up here. So all you need to do is input some values in the different columns to add more part types or to add a few operations here. You just enter more values in the different uh, existing columns of, of the, their actual part type. So, um, so that's it. In the next video, you'll see um, how to add an, an additional color to have a third, a third part type, which will be the yellow parts.